Hi grade 11 Lapu Lapu. So before we start our discussion, I would like you to say hi to my blog because my viewers will of course learn how to solve like you. You are very intelligent people and I know you can answer my questions later on. So let's start. So ayun, so hindi na kakilala sa akin. My name is Teacher Nicole and I am a teacher in Basic Calculus at Immaculate Conception Academy East Campus. As you all know, our topic for today will be evaluating limits through the use of the factoring method. So when do we use the factoring method? So it says here that when direct substitution of the constant C gives an indeterminate number of 0 over 0, you can first simplify the given rational function through the use of factoring and getting its factors, then directly substituting the constant C. So it is important that you have a great background on factoring a polynomial or a function because that will be useful in this lesson. So for our first example, we have the limits of x squared minus 9 all over x minus 3 as x approaches 3. So if you may notice, when you directly substitute 3 in the given function, it will give us an indeterminate number 0 over 0. So we have to now find a way to first simplify the given function before directly substituting x. And yes, there are many ways, but let us look first at our numerator. So if you will recall your grade 8 math, it is a difference of two squares. So that being said, we just have to extract the roots of x squared and 9, which is x and 3. Then let's use positive and negative since it is the difference of two squares. So therefore, the factors of x squared minus 9 is x plus 3 multiplied to x minus 3 all over x minus 3. So now, you can see that x minus 3 is present in both the numerator and the denominator. Therefore, we can cancel them out, leaving us with x plus 3 all over 1. Or, to simplify again, we do, we do not have to put 1 as a denominator. We can just remove it, but it will still be there. Our simplified function will be x plus 3. So now that we have simplified the function, we can directly substitute. So 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. Therefore, our first example, which is the limits of x squared minus 9 over, over x minus 3, as x approaches 3, is equal to 6. So I hope you got the first example. If you do not, of course, I've prepared the second one, as I usually do in my videos. So for our second example, we have the limits of x squared plus 3x minus 10 all over x minus 2 as x approaches 2. Again, you will notice that when you directly substitute the constant value, which is 2, to our given function, it will give us an indeterminate number of 0 over 0. So now let us look at our numerator. Can you factor it out for me? Okay, I'll do it for you. So it is important again to know how to factor out polynomials, especially trinomials, because it is essential in many, many aspects of mathematics. So x squared plus 3x minus 10. So we have to get, of course, its factors. Yes, I saw someone's lips moving. So it is indeed x plus 5 multiplied to x minus 2 all over x minus 2. So that is great. You know how to factor out the polynomial. And then let's move on to our second step or our next step. I don't know if it's the second or the third. I can't really count. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> so now we have our factors, which is x plus 5, x minus 2, all over x minus 2. Again, you will notice that x minus 2 is present in the numerator and the denominator. We can cancel them out both completely and it will leave us x plus 5 over 1 or x plus 5. So now that we have simplified our given function, we can substitute. So 2, that is um, substituted to the value of x. So 2 plus 5 is equal to 7. That is correct. So therefore, the limits of x squared plus 3x minus 10 
over x minus 2 as x approaches 2 is equal to 7. Yeah, that is so many 2. I hope you understood that. And to further challenge your knowledge about this lesson after our discussion, I have prepared examples or activities in the next slide, which is that, yes. And I want you to solve them on your own and I will be calling someone later on to further discuss our examples. So you have five minutes, timer starts now. One eternity later. Okay, so time's up. Who would like to do equation number one? I'm going to try the first example po. Yes, Jai. The equation that we have is 4x squared minus 4x minus 8 all over x squared minus 4 as x approaches 2. So the first thing we have to do is to simply substitute 2 to all the x variables by plugging in the values and simplifying. The answer that we will get is 0 over 0 or indeterminate. But we can take 0 over 0 as a valid answer. And so, what we have to do is to find another way in order for us to find a different answer. So, by using the factoring method. So, this is our equation. So, the factor of our numerator, 4x squared minus 4x minus 8 is 4x plus 4 times x minus 2. Meanwhile, the factored form of our denominator, which is x squared minus 4, is the difference of two squares. So, we will get x plus 2 times x minus 2. So, we have x minus 2 in both our numerator and denominator. So, we can cancel it out. So, the simplified form of this equation is 4x plus 4 all over x plus 2. The next thing we would do is to substitute 2 into this expression. So by simplifying, we will get 12 over 4 or 3. So the limits of 4x squared minus 4x minus 8 all over x squared minus 4 as x approaches 2 is 3. That is correct. Okay, that is good. Very, very good. Thank you, Jai, for our for explaining the answer for equation number one. How about equation number two? Okay. Okay, so the teacher has given us an activity that we should answer and this is the activity that we have. So the equation that I, the teacher has given to me is x, x raised to two plus three x over x as x approaches zero. So what I did is I substitute in the values. So I got zero squared plus three times 0 over 0 is equal to 0 over 0 or undefined. Now, we can't have an undefined answer. So what I did is I did the factoring method, which but we're going over here. So what I did is I factor out the x squared plus 3x and I get x over x plus 3 over x. Since we have 2x, we have to cross them out to get x plus 3. So now we have x plus 3. Now what we have to do is to substitute the value, we will get x plus 3, 0 plus 3, 0 plus 3, we will get 3. And that is the answer of this equation. Okay, thank you very much. So number 3 po is limits as x approaches 2 is equals to x squared plus 10x minus 24 over x minus 2. So first step po is mag-factor out muna tayo. So hahanap tayo ng dalawang number na kapag pinag-multiply ay mag equal sa 24. At yung dalawang number yun na yun, kailangan din po mag equal sa 10. So, ang naharap ko pong number ay positive 12 at negative 2. So, nakuha ko po yung positive 12 and negative 2 because 12 times 2 is equal to 24, tapos 12 minus 2 is equal to 10. So, limits as x approaches 2 is equal to x plus 12 times x minus 2 over x minus 2. So, ikakancel na po natin yung x minus 2 kasi pareho naman sila. So, ang natira na lang po ay yung x plus 12. So, magiging limits as x approaches 2 is equals to 2 plus 12. Sinabstitute na po natin yung 2. And it is equals to 14. Awesome! Wonderful job! You got it correct? So, that is the answer for equation number 3. 
So, are there any more questions, verifications, um, violent reactions? So, that's where this video ends. I am about to attend um, a meet with my fellow teachers in Immaculate Deception Academy East Campus. We will be having a faculty meeting. And I will see you again soon in another episode of Teacher Nicole's Vlogs about basic calculus. Again, do leave a like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to be updated on my videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you again soon.